Greetings everyone, Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today we're going to take a look at a band I've been looking to do for a long time from Sweden. I don't even know what you call these guys. I mean, I've been listening to them forever. Uh, they're an extreme metal band. They're sort of a progressive metal band. They kind of are the band that in invented that whole gent movement. Uh, some people kind of call them a death metal band because they got kind of the growly vocals, right? Um... They kind of do a little bit of the groove metal thing as well. Whatever you want to call them. The band is called Meshuga. That's their name. Uh, they've been around since the early 90s. They've got uh, eight full-length studio albums. A whole bunch of EPs and live things and what have you. We're just going to concentrate on the eight studio albums here. I'm going to rank them in the order of my preference. So uh, let's start at the beginning. All right. So uh, coming in at number eight. It's going to be their first album. Uh, contradictions collapse. So here, I think what uh, look at that a rare jewel case in my collection that has a crack. Um, my guess is that probably came like that because it's very rare that I actually crack any of my jewel cases. Um, but anyway, uh, this is um, this is their uh, reissue of this particular album. It also comes with the uh, EP for the with the nun stuff tagged onto the back which is pretty good by the way uh but this is their very first first album uh released in may 1991 nuclear blast records uh this is still showing meshuga at a very early stage trying to figure it all out this is much much more of a thrash album which you know if you look at 1991 thrash is still pretty riding pretty high right late 80s thrash really took off quite a bit still kind of doing pretty well uh, in the early 90s. That being said, some really good riffs on here, some good, you know, good guitar solos, um, Paralyzing Ignorance, good track, uh, Internal Evidence, Qualms of Reality, Erroneous Manipulation, good songs, good album. Just when stacked up against the regular rest of the catalog, doesn't quite hit the mark because it's still uh, a very young band uh, that hasn't really figured out their sound yet. All right, it's not far off. So that's coming at number eight. Coming in at number seven, we're going to go with the most recent album from 2016, The Violent Sleep of Reason. Very cool album cover here. You know, I like this album. I think all of these other albums uh, are actually very, very strong. And again, this is that kind of whole uh, it's very dense, progressive metal, gent. It's very avant-garde, right? Uh, this is... Um, of course, features the current lineup of the band. Jens Kidman on vocals. Frederick Thordendahl, who left for a few years. He's back in the band now on lead guitar. Uh, Martin Hagstrom, the amazing rhythm guitar player. Uh, Dick Lovgren on bass. And Thomas Hock on drums. One of the most amazing drummers you'll ever want to hear. Uh, hours worth of music. Pretty good album. Clockworks is great. Born on Dissonance is awesome. Violent Sleep of Reason, great track. A lot of, you know, five, four, five, six minute long songs here. My only problem with this album is, uh, and Ivory Tower is another really, really great track. My only problem with this album is, and I think I've kind of heard this creeping into the band's music the last couple of albums, a lot of the songs start to sound the same, the same after a while. Earlier in their career, they, I think, did a better job of mixing things up. And while this is still really enjoyable... You get a little bit of a fatigue, at least I do, um, you know, like maybe three quarters of the way through the album. Uh, there's a lot of songs on here. It's a long album. And rhythmically, it just everything is starting to sound a little the same to me. I still really like it a lot. All right, so, but it's coming at number seven. Coming at number six, uh, we're going to go with 2012's uh, Collis. Collis? Collis? K-O-L-O-S-S -S from 2012. Again, kind of a similar thing to The Violent Sleeper Reason. Uh, enjoyable album, amazing huge riffs. The production is just in your face. Uh, but again, there's a little bit of similarities um, in parts of the album, which again, not a not an awful thing. But when you get a couple of albums in a row from the band that are kind of like that, they almost become a little interchangeable. But in saying that, I do enjoy this quite a bit. Uh, I remember this ranked pretty high on my end of the year list in 2012. But, uh, you know, looking back on it, it's like I prefer some of the earlier albums, I think, um, because there's some diversity on them. But I Am Colossus, killer track. This album has some shorter tracks, which is kind of nice. Um, the Demon's Name is Surveillance, really good. Behind the Sun, 
Swarm is a killer, killer track. The Last Vigil, strong material. Really strong material. The band firing on all cylinders with the man, just the crazy rhythms and those stop start, big thumping, groovy riffs. I mean, just, you know, the eight string guitars is just like, it's just crazy, crazy. All right, next up uh, from 2008, I'm going to go with uh, Obzen. So if you want to see the whole picture, it's a pretty, <laughs> pretty crazy album cover, right? Uh, Obzen is quite good. Uh, I listened to this a lot when it came out. I still like it quite a bit. A um, lot of tremendous grooves and, and songs on here. Title track is awesome. Electric Red, another really good track. Uh, Bleed, probably the song to look for on here. Uh, Combustion kicks it all off. Provis, the last song. Pineal Gland Optics. I mean, just some crazy lyrical content, crazy song titles, and the music is just like kind of like all over the place. These just elastic riffs that you know, I mean, it's just it's so hard to explain the music of Meshuga. I mean, these just like jackhammer rhythms. The the drums are all over the place. Uh, really big bass, but these just thick, groovy technical riffs. And in the occasional you know, little solo from Frederick, which is, you know, he's a big Alan Holdsworth fan. So you get in the middle of all this mayhem, you get this weird just kind of legato guitar solo, which would, you know, sound like it came off like a, an Alan Holdsworth solo album. So uh, pretty cool. And then you got, you know, the Jens's barking vocals. They're not really growls. They're more like kind of barks. Right? He's got a very unique vocal style, which uh, at times, you know, over the years, I've thought kind of is a weird fit for the band, but, you know, now it's like, you know, you got to have that voice here, right? It's just, it wouldn't be Miss Sugar without it. So, uh, yeah, Obzen is coming in at number, what, six, right? Is that what I said? Eight, seven, six, five, actually. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, that's number five. So, uh, number four is going to be from 2002, uh, Nothing. Okay, this is their fourth album. And, of course, this is the remaster, so the original album had the more of, like, a orange, basically this in, like, orange and black type of uh, coloring. Um, really strong album. Uh, some of their signature tracks are on this album, Stenga being one of them. Again, that kind of those kind of stop-start rhythms and riffs, just amazing. Rational Gaze is awesome. Organic Shadows, Spasm, Nebulous, uh, Perpetual Black Second. Really, really strong album. Just under an hour. Uh, again, basically, uh, you know, here this is uh, Jens on vocals, Frederick on lead guitar. He also played bass on this album. Uh, Martin played rhythm guitar and bass. They didn't have an actual bass player uh, for this studio session. And Tomas, obviously, on drums, right? Really cool album. I could totally see some folks ranking this a little bit higher. Uh, at the top of this catalog is where it gets kind of difficult uh, because it's uh, it's just all really, really strong here. Uh, next up for me at number three, uh, I'm going to go with, and I remember when this came out, I absolutely loved this and couldn't stop listening to it. Uh, that would be uh, Catch 33. All right, Catch 33, of course, from 2005. Let's see, let's see a very cool cover. So this is their big kind of like concept album. Uh, 13 tracks, yet it's all basically one long song. So this is almost like they're thick as a brick. All right, it's like one long, continuous suite. Um, very experimental. Lots of different avant-garde textures, okay? It's definitely progressive. And, um, you know, you got uh, little bits of programmed drums and synthesizers in here, which is uh, a little bit different for the band, right? Obviously, Tomas experimenting with all sorts of stuff. And, uh, you know, just a non-stop mix of styles it's proggy it's totally extreme it's genty it's 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 avant-garde and it just kind of really flows very very nicely so you get like all these again it's you know it's fairly it's about 45 minutes long maybe slightly more than that and there's no like really long tracks other than uh, in death is death which is the big kind of like 13 minute long section on here uh, it's actually a two-parter, so it's about 15 minutes in length. The rest of it is all like these little minute and a half little pastiches, right? And then you have like maybe a handful of tracks that are a little bit longer. S some is like seven minutes. Um, what else we got on here? The Paradoxical Spiral is like three minutes. Uh, Minds Mirrors is four. The rest of it's just like these little kind of, you know, quick little things. Shed is also about three minutes in length. But a great album. And I think if you want to hear like the more experimental side to this band, uh, where they really 
dive into some proggy things and avant-garde and atmospheric, uh, you know, textures. This is definitely the one to check out. I have a very soft spot in my heart for that one because, of course, I love proggy things, right? So uh, the top two were pretty difficult, pretty difficult for me, and uh, I think my number two ultimately will get picked number one by most people, and that is their 1995 release, Destroy, Erase, Improve. Uh, killer album. This basically is the album. This is their second full length. This is the album where it all finally came together. And not surprisingly, it's also the first album to feature a uh, rhythm guitarist Martin Hagstrom, okay, who of course has been a mainstay ever since. And uh, this is where all of those kind of real technical, the rhythmically complex, the polyrhythms, the, the, you know, the beginnings of the whole gent movement. This is where it comes in. Massive riffs on this album. Really kind of technical arrangements. Loads of off-the-wall, off-kilter, Holdsworthian guitar from Frederick. Uh, Future Breed Machine, of course, is a legendary song from the band. Uh, Soul Burn, Acrid Placidity, Terminal Illusions. I mean, these are all very memorable, memorable songs. Sub Levels, Suffering Truth, Beneath, Soul Burn, Transfiction. It's all here. Great, great album. Really cool production. And, uh, you know, it's been, I think, difficult for the band having such a notable classic of the genre come so early in their catalog. And they've been kind of like, you know, trying to best it, I wouldn't say, or, you know, trying to come up with something as. Uh, classic as this. And in my opinion, I think they've done that or come close to it on a couple of occasions. But for a lot of people, uh, this is like one of the greatest, uh, you know, extreme metal albums of all time. Certainly one of the greatest progressive metal albums of all time, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, under normal circumstances, I might actually agree with that. Uh, however, their next album, I think, really just kind of blew my mind. And that would be uh, Chaos Fear. Love that cover too, by the way. Awesome. Check that out. So this is uh, the band just really, really pumping up the groove element. All right. The polyrhythms are off the charts here, but this album is all about the bottom end. I mean, it's just, it's such a heavy album. It's such a groove laden album. Uh, and it's quite technical, but this is more about the just. I mean, it's just, it's hard to even explain. You can't even like really hum this stuff. It's just so massive sounding, right? Uh, you've got new Millennium Cyanide Christ, another one of their most well known tracks. Uh, you've got uh, Neurotica, Corridor of Chameleons, right? Concertination. I mean, Elastic is the big um, kind of like epic on the end of the album, the mouth licking what you've bled, sane, the exquisite machinery of torture, just an amazing, amazing album that just sounds incredible. Um, you know, again, Jens, you got Gustav Heilm on bass on this album, you got Tomas on drums, you got Martin on rhythm guitar, and Frederick Thorndall obviously on lead guitar and some synthesizers, and you've got, uh, you know, Frederick and uh, Daniel Bergstrand handling the production on the album. Just really great sounding album and just absolutely, absolutely massive. Um, just great stuff. I do want to give uh, props to a couple of their um, their EPs, uh, specifically uh, the I album, the I EP, which is basically you know like one was a 20 minute track. Very very cool. Almost a companion piece to the Catch 33 album. And then uh, like I mentioned, the Nun EP is also very very good. But they've got a whole bunch of them. They got the, the True Human Design, got Pitch Black, um, Self Cade. So there's a bunch of uh, different like EPs and things from the band. So there's plenty of material. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna go Chaos Fear at number one. We're gonna go Destroy Erase Improve at number two. We're gonna go Catch 33 at number three. We're gonna go with uh, Nothing at number four. Obzin number five, Coloss number six, Violent Sleep number seven, and Contradictions Collapse at number one. I mean, sorry, number eight at the, at the bottom of the bottom of the list, but still pretty good. I would say uh, these are all very strong albums. Uh, this is probably the least Meshuggah-ish of all of them, but still a very good like Swedish thrash album from the early 90s. The rest of it, all really good. I wouldn't argue if any of you watching uh, wanted to rank these very differently because they're all really strong. Kind of a hard catalog to do because there is 
is a uh, quality of all of them that I think uh, is pretty damn high. So it's all a matter of kind of, you know, when you came into the catalog, uh, you know, which ones kind of rose to the top for you and, uh, you know, and how many people are kind of still, still listening to all their albums to this day, right? So I know some folks jumped on board early and then jumped off some people came on later so you know it's, that's how it happens with fans and music right so uh put your ranking in the comments below visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org we're on facebook we're on twitter of course we're here on youtube all the damn time we've got another ranking show coming up this weekend on sunday john McEntee and myself are going to rank the catalog of new york death metal legend suffocation for all of you maybe not into extreme metal and more into classic rock stuff, I'm going to be ranking the catalog of uh, Fleetwood Mac this weekend as well, so stay tuned for that. All sorts of other stuff uh, we've got uh, tonight. We've got the Monsters Den. All right, We've got uh, Martin Popoff in the house for two shows tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. And uh, all sorts of other stuff happening in the weeks ahead, so stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't. There is a link to our Ko-Fi page below if you want to make a donation. We've got the link to our merch page if you want to get a Sea of Tranquility Monsters Den, Hudson Valley Squares, Comic Book Geezers uh, merch, all available at that link. So check that out as well as our website. So stay tuned for more great stuff. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.